So, a quick recap of what we were doing in the last class, uh, we had a viable operational amplifier. It basically consists of the differential pair The reason why we have an active load is to be able to get a large DC gain within a limited supply voltage. Then a common source second stage and some kind of source follower, uh, so that you get a low output impedance, right. And uh, the DC gain uh, is uh, approximately you know, the order of GMROD. All right, because that corresponds to two stages of gain. I mean, when I say order of, you know, there's a factors of two and four and missing so and so on. All right, and uh, uh, more importantly, we know why the circuit came about. It's not something that we just put on the board and say, hey, let's sit and analyze this. this. Is an op amp? Let's analyze it. Right? Uh, we know why each one of those components is there, and uh, uh, we know the type why each type of transistor is used uh, uh, where it is. Hmm? For the output stage, it doesn't really matter whether we use NMOS or uh, PMOS, uh, you know, uh, common uh, drain amplifiers. Okay. Now, uh, which is the positive terminal of the op amp? A or B? B is the positive terminal, and uh, so uh, so let's say we put an input at B, which is uh, we also discussed yesterday the notion of, and we just take values for. Uh, uh, for argument sake, let's say, let's say this is 5 volts, let us say V t is, is 1 volt and delta V for all transistors is, uh, is uh, say 200 millivolts. Uh, and uh, so, uh, let us uh, the input must be hovering around V d d by 2. So, this is 2.5 plus some A sin omega t that is the input all right. And let us say, uh, we connect it up as a source follower. So, this is the, the feedback path, all right. And so, what we have in essence is a unity gain buffer so this is 2.5 plus a sin omega t and this is v o. All right, and uh, now the question that we're uh, uh, trying to ask is, uh, what is the the largest A for distortion-free operation? All right. I mean, so the uh, and to to do that, we uh, I guess have to replace these. Uh, how are we going to implement these current sources? What are we going to do? It must be N MOS current source. And uh, there is some master bias 
some i naught and uh, let us assume that all the sizes are, uh, are uh, uh, what do you call such as I said that the overdrive of every transistor is chosen to be 200 millivolts. That can be, can be done by simply uh, playing around with the sizes. This is idea. Is this clear? All right, quickly let us go through the operating point. When A is 0, uh, what is the output voltage? Assuming GMRO is very large. So, this voltage is 2.5. What is uh, this voltage? Three point seven. Okay. What about uh, 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 this voltage? That's five minus one point two, which is three point eight. What is this voltage? Three point eight. All right. What is this voltage? Which is nothing but yeah. Uh, we this voltage is nothing but the gate voltage minus VGS. And what is VGS? Which is how much? One point two. So two point five minus one point two is one point three. All right. What is this voltage? Point. So, all the, uh, the quiescent voltages are known, right. The next thing is to find the swing limits. So, how many transistors are there here? There are 10 transistors, all right. And uh, you know, uh, uh, it certainly uh, 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 it can look intimidating, but I mean, it, as you know, uh, you know how everything comes about. Correct. Okay. So, uh, how will we figure out what the maximum A is uh, to ensure that the output is not distorted? What should we, what are we looking for? Yeah. So, swing limits for individual transistors and basically uh, you find the minimum for each transistor and then find the minimum of all the minima. Correct. It sounds like a daunting task, but as you will see going forward, it is it is not that uh, that difficult. So. Uh, so, once we found the quiescent voltage, we, the next thing is to find the, the incremental voltages everywhere. So, uh, if this is A sin omega t, let me write mark all the incremental stuff in blue uh, or let me call this V i. So, that uh, it is easier to track. Uh, what comment can you make uh, uh, here or what comment can you make here? V i, all right. If this is V i and this is V i, what comment can you make there? Yeah, assume I mean for operating point and uh, you know uh, what do you call incremental voltage calculations. Let's assume that the R o is infinity. Okay, fine. What is the voltage on the left side of the differential pair? What is the voltage on the right side? V i. What is the incremental current flowing uh, in uh, M1 and M2? Huh? As I said, let us assume that uh, the output resistance is infinite for all the transistors. Why? Why is it V i? The claim is that this is V i. Why is this V i? Okay. Yeah, so the uh, there is uh, uh, the incremental current flowing through the tail current transistor is what is the incremental current flowing through that uh, transistor colored in green? R naught is in fact, all right. So, so if, if uh, you are still not able to figure it out, let us assume that that is V x. So, the current flowing through incremental current flowing through M 1 is nothing but G m times. V i minus V x. 
which is the same as the current flowing through incremental current flowing through m2 so twice that must be the current flowing through out of the common source node and that must be equal to 0 and therefore vi must be equal to vx all right so this vx is equal to vi all right so uh, what comment can you make about the incremental voltage there incremental vgs is 0 so the current flowing here is 0 so what comment can you make about the voltage there incremental voltage there is 0 all right okay is this clear all right uh, what comment can we make about uh, the uh, the the incremental voltage here Why? Where is GM infinite? GM is not infinite. GM and R naught are two different things. You understand that, right? R naught is infinite. So this this character here, what what is that? It's a it's an incremental voltage control voltage source. So ideally, its incremental gain is GM R naught divided by 1 plus gm r naught r naught is infinite so what is the incremental gain 1 so if the output has an incremental voltage vi the input must have an incremental voltage vi okay and uh, if this incremental voltage is vi what comment can you make about the incremental voltage here minus gi by vi by okay what is r naught ah huh? okay so what is the incremental voltage here the incremental voltage there is zero is this clear to everybody that is because the incremental voltage uh, uh, the gain from here to here is minus gm ro we assume that ro is infinite so therefore the gain is infinite if the gain is infinite it must follow that the incremental voltage at the input must be the output swing divided by output voltage divided by the gain the gain is infinite so this must be zero so this uh, does not change all right okay now uh, what about the incremental voltage there so this is basically incrementally zero Okay. 